welcome to CNIB Lake Joe on the go Lake Joe on the go Hello everybody and welcome back to CNIB Lake Joe on the go the podcast you can listen to whether you're at home or if you're on the go I'm your host Taylor G I am the virtual program coordinator for CNIB Lake Joe at home and today I am joined by a great pal of mine who I've had the pleasure of working with for a handful of years now, Emily. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here. I'm Emily. I'm the coordinator of sport and active living and going into my fifth season with Lake Joe. So today we have a really exciting episode back for you guys. We thought that it could be a good idea for us to provide you with an audible camp tour. We know that there's a handful of you that maybe haven't been to camp before and could be curious about uh, the lay of the land, or maybe you have been to Lake Joe before, but it hasn't been for a long time. So um, you might need some updates or just a refresher on the layout of the property. When we arrive at camp, the first building we go to is the Welcome Center. At the front of the Welcome Center, There are two large white wooden poles. As we walk right through the two poles, we are greeted with the door. When we enter, we walk through a long hallway. On the left, there is the office where the guest services magic happens. On the right, there is a short hallway that leads to a set of washrooms. The women's washroom is on the left and the men's washroom is on the right. Continuing along the right side, at the end of the hallway, there is the program office. Across from the program office, on the left at the end of the hallway, is the window and counter to our tuck shop. The end of the hallway opens up into a larger room with windows facing the waterfront and some tables with chairs. But if we continue to the left after the end of the hallway, there is a door that opens away from us on the left onto the start of our boardwalk and deck. Upon exiting the Welcome Center, we start our journey on the boardwalk. When we walk straight out a couple of meters, we'll find our waterfront facing deck. The space is covered by a large tent and has a set of black rectangular tables with black chairs set around them. Be sure to watch out for those tent poles on your way. We have padded them with pool noodles though. At breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the staff enjoys their meals out here. The deck can be enjoyed by all during the day to relax and enjoy the company of camp pals. Just past the tent on the deck, there's a ramp to the right that leads down a concrete path and takes us to the waterfront. But for the sake of this tour, we're going to pass by the deck and continue straight down the boardwalk, which brings us to a set of doors to the dining hall and lounge. When we enter through the door of the dining hall from the deck, there is a men's washroom down a short hallway to our immediate left. On the right wall of this hallway, there is a shelf with a ton of braille books and large print books on it. But if we continue past the men's washroom hallway, We will continue on a tactile high contrast path that cuts the dining hall and lounge into two halves. Lining the outside of this main path on both sides, there are three sets of metal railings with two openings into the dining hall and lounge. On the left, we have the dining hall, which has three columns of round tables with chairs. These columns are separated by extensions of the high contrast tactile path that lead all the way to the back of the dining hall. On the back wall of the dining hall, there are three doors, which are for staff access only, but on the far left of the back wall, we have a sink for hand washing as well as you can fill your water bottle there. While you are welcome to use this sink to wash your hands, our staff always provide hand sanitizer at the beginning of meals. Now we're going to turn around and head back to the main path that cuts through the building. On our right, opposite the dining hall, there are two openings between the metal railings into the lounge, just like the openings on the same side of the dining hall. Like the dining hall, the lounge is separated into three columns separated by paths between. These columns are set up with sets of couches facing each other with coffee tables between. 
The back wall of the lounge is all waterfront facing windows, which lets in beautiful daylight during the day. In the middle of the wall is an electric fireplace, which keeps us warm and cozy on chillier days. On the other side of this wall outside, there are several rows of picnic tables for picnic lunches and even some programming. Back inside the lounge, facing the wall of windows, before the right set of doors, we have a big black grand piano that all are welcome to use. Once again, we're going to head back to the main path in the dining hall and lounge. Continuing down this path from the direction we entered originally, there are another set of doors leading out onto the other side of the boardwalk. But before we exit, there's a short hallway to the left, similar to the one on the side that we came from. And straight down this hallway, there's a women's washroom. On the left wall of this short hallway, there's a shelf full of audiobooks. When we exit from this side of the dining hall and lounge, the boardwalk continues straight. There's a slight decline to the right that leads us toward the patio outside the lounge, which we mentioned, and the waterfront. Or we can hang a left and head towards the adventure zone. As we travel to the adventure zone, our wooden boardwalk path will change into a cement sidewalk. This path will continue straight with a few turns along the way. This path will also cross a driveway, so be sure to keep an eye out for cars and tandem bikes. Speaking of tandem bikes, when you approach the driveway, if you turn left off the path, you'll head towards our big shop, which is where our tandem bikes are located. Alternatively, if you turn right off the path onto the driveway, you'll find the entrance to our new soccer field. The field path is not yet defined and consists of small gravel incline onto the field. But if you need any assistance, just give our staff our holler. But for now, we will continue straight on the path. This path will eventually end, and when it does, you'll be in the adventure zone. To your left, you'll have a small fenced-in area known as Dudley's Den. This is our guide dog relief area. There's also a small garbage can by the entrance for any waste disposal. Straight ahead off the end of the path, there's an open grassy area, which is our archery range. It can be identified with a large white target, two ropes on either side, and a long wooden pole on the ground to indicate where the range starts. Always ensure a staff is with you when entering our, the archery range for safety. Finally, on our right to the end of the path is our rock wall. This 36 foot wall has a small area of wood chips at the bottom and three large wooden pillars for our rope system. Once again, for your safety, please ensure that there's a staff present when you're at the wall and you have a helmet when you're entering the wood chips area. Now we'll head back the way we came and return to the boardwalk. So before we continue down the boardwalk, we just have some boardwalk accessibility notes. So the boardwalk is a wide wooden walkway lined on both sides with wooden railings that stretches across camp from the Welcome Center all the way to Oak Cabin. This boardwalk is parallel to the shoreline of Lake Joseph. Buildings along the boardwalk beyond the dining hall and lounge include the Wellness Center as well as our six cabins. Across from each building's entrance, there are two big posts to indicate where the entrance is. As well, you may note that the main boardwalk railings are slanted. This is to indicate their direction as being parallel to the waterfront. Pathways that divert off of the boardwalk toward or away from the waterfront are indicated with flat railing. The slanted rails across from the waterfront facing cabins, H, K, and M, are removable for car unpacking and packing purposes. Just a reminder of where we are, we are just outside of the dining hall doors we came out originally, and as we continue down the boardwalk, the first building that we encounter on our left is the Wellness Center. The Wellness Center door opens away from us into the building on the left. The nurse's counter can be found on the right-hand side as we walk in, and a seating area to the left opposite the nurse's counter. Continuing down the boardwalk, we have our six cabins. Three on the right facing the waterfront, which are H, K, and M, and three on the left facing the soccer pitch, J, L, and O, that alternate from side to side as you make your way down the boardwalk. All of our cabins are named after trees. Starting on the right, we have H cabin, which stands for hemlocks. Next, on the left is J cabin, which stands for juniper. 
Then we have K cabin on the right, which stands for king maple. L cabin on the left, which stands for larches. The last cabin on the right is M cabin, which stands for magnolia. And the last cabin on our left is O cabin, which stands for oak. Each cabin is laid out identically. Upon entering, there is a long hallway with five rooms on either side. Each room has two beds and two nightstands and its own ensuite washroom. Odd number rooms are on the right side and even number rooms are always on the left. The room numbers can be located on a sign beside the door. The number is high contrast and tactile. At the end of the hallway, there's a door that opens away from you into a screened porch with a rectangle table set out with chairs similar to the kind on the deck. There's a tactile map on the table and there's also a cart inside the porch full of fun activities and a porch binder with all the need to know Lake Joe info in it. On the right side of each cabin porch, there is a garbage can, recycling bin, and then a door that opens onto a narrow path. On the waterfront side, these paths lead down to the waterfront and on the soccer pitch side, they lead you onto the gravel driveway between the cabins and the adventure zone. It is important to note that the porch doors do not have an automatic accessibility button. You can identify each cabin in a couple of different ways from the boardwalk. Each cabin has a narrow window on the left of the door that has a large print letter and some have tactile letters. Below the door window, parallel to the door handle, there's a tactile print version of the cabin's full name with the full name in braille underneath the print lettering. Each cabin has color-coded signage inside and out to help differentiate the cabins if you have color vision. The boardwalk continues past O cabin and slightly declines to the right, leading you on a concrete path to the rec hall. The railing stops where the boardwalk ends and a concrete path begins. At this point, we can choose to turn right and bypass the rec hall, which is the main path that will take us down to all of the program areas alongside the waterfront of the camp, all the way down to the boathouse. For the sake of this tour, we're going to keep straight and keep heading towards the rec hall. As we approach the rec hall, there is a railing that starts again on our right, which will lead us to the door of the rec hall that opens out towards us on the right. When we enter the rec hall, to our left are rectangular foldable tables set with chairs, which is where some of our arts and crafts programs take place. On our right, along the wall with the doors that we just entered through, there is a desk with a computer and a CCTV. As we continue to walk into the rec hall, a couple meters away from the desk, there is a gray sectional couch that is shaped like a C and it faces the right towards a TV. Along this right wall, to the right of the TV, there is a plastic shelving unit that has musical instruments on it. In the right corner, past the instruments, there is a tall cabinet that has all of our games inside. To the left of the TV on the right wall, there is a side door that opens out to the right and will lead you back to the main concrete path we just mentioned earlier. To the left of the side door is a corner with an electric piano and a rack of acoustic guitars. Now we have walked straight through the rec hall. We have reached the doors directly across from the ones we entered through. The door on the right is the one we use, and it opens to the right onto the screened rec hall porch. To the left on the porch, we have our kiln in the corner, which is restricted to staff use only, but there are some more foldable tables here, which is where our pottery program is based. To our right, we have an outdoor patio sectional that we can enjoy. And behind it, we have our big yellow power showdown table, which is somewhat like an accessible version of table tennis or ping pong. Directly across from the doors we entered the porch from, there is a single screen door that opens out away from us to the right. This door does not have an automatic accessibility button and leads us out onto grassy terrain. From this point, in the 11 o'clock direction, we could walk up a steep hill that leads us to the gazebo and the second part of our nature trail. 
for the sake of our tour, we are going to turn right and walk down a slight decline towards the main path. Now that we've made it back to the main path, we are going to turn left towards the waterfront. As we continue along the main path, we veer right slightly and reach an entrance to a side path on our left. This path is lined with PVC pipe railing on the right hand side and will bring us to a small fishing dock, which is where we run our fishing program. However, about halfway down the fishing dock path, there is a natural path that turns to the left and is the start of our nature trail. This first section leads up to our gazebo and the second half of our nature trail. This section is also lined with PVC pipe railing on our right-handed side. However, this path has a very steep incline and has rocks and roots that may be challenging for some to navigate. As we follow the railing up to the beginning of the nature trail, we also reach the top of our hill where the gazebo is located. The rest of the nature trail continues past the gazebo with PVC pipe railing on the right, the trail has a lot of ups and downs, a couple benches placed on the left throughout the path to take a break and enjoy the sounds of nature, as well as a couple sets of stairs and large rocks going down and up again. Finally, this path comes to an end across the driveway from O Cabin. We offer the nature trail as a staff program, but if you choose to go on an adventure at another time, we advise that you bring a buddy. If we stayed on the main path instead of going towards the fishing dock, nature trail, and gazebo, we have our campfire area to the left of our main concrete path. We have a fire pit that is surrounded by a circle of CNIB Lake Joe's signature white Muskoka chairs. There is an opening between some chairs just to the left of the main path where we can enter and find a seat to enjoy the campfire. Facing the lake to the left of our campfire circle, we have our sky hut, which is used by staff to store equipment for canoeing, sailing, and our campfire programs. Just beyond the sky hut to the right, we have our pizza oven that we also use for programs. If we continue past the campfire area along the main path, there are a couple of benches and Muskoka chairs on our right that are going to continue all the way down to the end of the waterfront area. As we keep going, there's a short path that branches to the left, which leads to the canoeing and sailing dock. This dock is closed when program is closed or if there are no available staff on shore. When arriving at the canoeing and sailing programs, please wait by the paved area before the dock begins to be assisted by a staff member. Along the main path on our left, as we pass the canoeing and sailing dock, there's a stretch of land where we store our sailboats. On the right side of the path, across from the sailboats, there's a rack of canoes followed by a concrete path that takes us back up to the patio outside the lounge. Continuing shortly past the sailboats on our left, our white picket fence and our swimming area begins. The white picket fence encloses the beach and swimming area of our waterfront. Along this stretch of white picket fence, there are black wooden letters that represent each cabin. These letters are used for emergency purposes, which we cover at the beginning of the week. There is a gate that opens only when program is running, but if we enter through the gate, there is a paved path that cuts through the sandy beach and leads us right to the shore of Lake Joseph. Our swimming area is enclosed by buoy lines sectioning off the deep area from the shallow area. On the right of the main path, between the Muskoka chairs and the deck outside of the Welcome Center, we have a huge lawn where we play outdoor games. Where the white picket fence ends on our left, so do the Muskoka chairs on our right. And just past this area to our right, there is another path extension that we can take to head all the way back around to the Welcome Center, which would be on our right when we get there. If we keep on our main path, just beyond the beach area on the left, we have our kayak, paddle boat, and stand-up paddleboard area. This area is a sandy section on the right of the boat storage racks that leads to the shore. This location is also used for open dog swims at specific designated times. Opposite the kayaks on the right side, we have our sports court. This area consists of two sections, our shuffleboard court, which is a flat open rectangle, and our basketball court, which is an enclosed flat rectangle. 
Our basketball court is surrounded by a fence-like netting with a door on the corner closest to the swimming area. This court may also be converted to play tennis, badminton, volleyball, and more. All of the sports court materials are stored in a shed on the far side of the shuffleboard court. As we pass the kayak area and the sports court, there is a PVC pipe railing that starts on our left-hand side and leads us along the path all the way around a left corner to the very end of our main concrete path to our boathouse dock. This dock has a large open space that is fenced in for safety. This area also has benches for when waiting for program or just to enjoy. When facing the lake, we can follow the fence on our right side past the boathouse, which leads us to the gate to the open, unfenced dock area, which is where our pontoon cruises, tubing, and water slide programs take place. When approaching the gate, there is a little alcove to the left with another bench. It is required that we remain on the fence side of the boathouse dock when waiting to be fitted for life jackets and to be instructed by a staff to enter the open dock area. From the boathouse dock, you can head back the way that we just came from to return to all of the programs that we have mentioned, as well as all of the buildings. Thank you for joining us on our tour today. This concludes the tour, and I really hope that you found it insightful and you have a clearer idea of how our property is laid out. And thank you so much to Emily for joining me on this tour today. We look forward to having you join us next time on CNIB Lake Joe on the go. Bye! Bye.